Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're taking a look at Antigross. Now, if you're not familiar with it, it is an Arch-based distribution. In fact, you could really think of it as a easy-to-use installer for Arch. But how does it compare to other Arch-based distributions, and how does it compare to Arch itself? Let's take a look. So let's start out at the Antigross website and one of the things that they've got going on here it's something that I like to see with uh, with uh, distros that I'm about to uh, about to review is a well organized website and the, and they definitely have that here. Um, you know I'm not too much concerned about the theming and that sort of thing but what I am looking for is is the information organized can I find the stuff that I need to find yeah, that sort of thing and and like I said they definitely have it here you know you got real clear links for both their blog the downloads community links info development donations uh, all that kind of stuff and uh, as you scroll down the main home page it kind of gives you uh, some quick overviews of what's going on latest news from the blog which looks like the latest things in the blog have been their their ISO refreshing which is uh, you know that's 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 pretty typical for a lot of, of rolling releases you know what's the latest release and that sort of thing and then we get down to the bottom you know you can see recent uh, recent things from both their forum and then the recent package updates and going to their download page You guys kind of scroll down to the bottom, tells you a little bit about the, the ISOs that are available, that sort of thing. And then getting down here at the bottom, if you go to where it says latest install media, there you can grab your ISOs. Now, unlike a lot of distros where you have a separate installation media for each uh, each desktop environment available, Antigros doesn't do that. All of the ins all of the desktops are available through one installation media. The only separate installation media you have is for what they call their minimal ISO. So if you just want to get that that core of uh, of uh, Antigros, and then also talks a little bit about the uh, the testing builds, and you can access the build server from here. The only real issue I had with the website had to do with the wiki and let me go there. If you go to the wiki and it's not really a true wiki, it's just a series of uh, a blog posts. Probably they're all in a article category, which is no big deal. That that part of it's not a problem and you can see they've got listed, you know, most popular articles, the new articles, you can do a search up here. You can you can search by keywords over here so you know that part of it wasn't an issue it's that a lot of these are outdated um, and you know on one hand I can understand that if you got limited resources uh, you want to focus on the development but at the same time like I said a lot of these articles are outdated somebody's going to be coming here looking for information and you know gets gets outdated info finds a, a, a tutorial that doesn't work because it's outdated uh, that's a little bit of an issue as you can see I installed the GNOME 3 desktop GNOME 3 is the default uh, uh, desktop environment but as I mentioned earlier there are other desktops available through the installer you can install Cinnamon, KDE, Mate, Openbox, XFCE and then they also have an option for what they call base which is essentially no graphical environment you install the base uh, Antigros, uh you know core and then you can go back and install whatever desktop environment you want or you know maybe you want uh, ice window manager or or uh, Fluxbox, something like that uh, you can go through the installation process and uh, and and uh, install that way while I'm on the subject of the installer uh, installer work great one thing you need to watch out for when you boot into your live environment um, wait I don't know maybe 30 seconds or so before you fire up the installer because the uh, uh, the live media will 
we'll go and check to see if there's any updates to the installer. If so, you can update the installer and then go through the installation process. And I actually did run into um, uh, an update issue when uh, when I was doing my installation at first. You know, I, I booted into that live ISO, immediately clicked on the installer, and the installer froze up on me. Uh, as it turned out, I needed to let that installer uh, uh, update. So rebooted, started over, this time waited a little bit so that, you know, that, that installer had a chance to update. And from that point on, uh, everything was smooth sailing. Now, um, when I did a previous review of Anagros, I recorded a, uh, the process of the installation I ran through uh, in GNOME boxes, did a walkthrough. So I will leave a link down below in the video description so you can take a look at that if you would like to check it out. And, um, you know, I, di I didn't see any need to go and repeat all of that again because the installer is essentially the same as what you see in that other video. The theming that you see here is default Anagros, and let me go and we'll open up the uh, tweak tool and just so you can take a look at what we've got going on for the theming. Alright, and you can see we've got for the GTK theme, we've got Numix Frost, for the icons, the Numix Square, uh, Etowa for our cursor theme, and then Numix Frost for our shell theme. Um, now there are a few in, uh, uh, GNOME Shell extensions installed by default. I personally added a fair number of other ones, ones that I use uh, on a regular basis. You know, I added the window or uh, weather indicator here, clipboard indicator. Um, this one right here is for um, it's called Shell Shape and allows you to play around with. Um, uh, the different shapes and, and, and positioning of windows uh, as you're opening things. and It was one of those things I wanted to play around with it and see how it worked and it if you're just using a single monitor this is a pretty good um, a pretty good application or a pr pretty good extension. If you have dual monitors it doesn't seem to play well with the dual monitors like it doesn't recognize that there's a second monitor there and only goes and organizes these windows on a single monitor so it really didn't work out too well for me. But anyway I got so I installed that of course caffeine I always use caffeine so I can keep uh, the screensaver from kicking in and then of course our tray icons um, drop box right there and then this little indicator right here is for our package manager which I'll talk about that in just a moment um, besides the the extensions and like I said they've got they have installed a few extensions by default and then I ex added a few more they've done some some tweaking of the um, of the various settings here especially in over here in Windows as compared to um, uh, what comes default with GNOME 3? One is that you actually do have um, the uh, all three of your your window buttons, whereas normally on uh, on GNOME 3 by default they're not all three activated. Um, so a little bit of tweaking there. So you're not getting just default uh, uh, just default uh, GNOME shell. Package management was great. Uh, like I said before, this is the uh, indicator for package manager up here. Just go and uh, you see you have a choice of update manager, package manager. We'll just open up the package manager. If you're coming from a uh, Ubuntu based distribution, very similar to a synaptic package manager, you can just type in whatever it is that you're looking for. Like let's say uh, uh, we'll go look for calc and uh, you see you got GNOME Calculator, probably have uh, KCALC and some other stuff like that. Um, you know, you could do a search for, oh, LibreOffice. And you see it's, it's very sp responsive. Um, now, if you go and select this little indicator right here, you can search through the AUR as well. If you're not familiar with the AUR, it stands for Arch User Repository. Basically, it is a repository set up so that community members can go and do all the compiling necessary for installing a piece of software and uh, allows you to use stuff that's not in the default 
Arch, uh, uh, Arch repositories. So once you add in the AUR, there's pretty much uh, pretty much any software that's available for Linux, you're going to be able to find uh, either in the in the regular repositories or through the AUR. So very um, very nice uh, setup here. Um, as far as doing an actual installation, very easy to work with. You just select whatever it is you want to install, right click it, click install. You can look at the details if you want to do that. But after you've selected something, you just click apply. It'll give you, you know, what is going to install, total download size, commit, and put in our password. And as far as running the updates, the update manager, just select that, give it a second to go through the repository, see if there's anything that's uh, that can be updated. I don't have anything right now just because I, I updated earlier today, so, so nothing's listed here. But it would list all the packages that can be updated. You can select them, not select them, and then, boom, run through the, the uh, update. Very easy to work with. So great installer, good website, uh, awesome theming, lots of software available, and a great package manager. You know, it sounds like they got it all together here. Unfortunately, where I've been having issues has been performance. Um, opening up a lot of programs, it's very laggy, um, and really it seems like the system doesn't like to do more than one thing at a time. Um, I've run into big issues with with uh, software crashing if I'm using more than one program at a time. I've tried to do some debugging, but there's just been so many problems that uh, you know it's kind of hard for me to track it all down. And uh, you know I've been using this as my main distro for a, about a week and a half now. Um, you know, I had, uh, and, and the main reason I went with that, I had a bunch of people that, uh, you know, sent me messages, hey, you should use uh, Anagros as your next main uh, main desktop distro. It's like, okay, you know, I haven't played around with the distro in a while. I'll go ahead and give it a shot. But unfortunately, the way the performance has been, uh, it, it's been a struggle to uh, keep up with my workflow. So I don't know if... Um, if the uh, if this distro just is kind of um, pretty picky about what uh, what hardware you put it on, I don't know. Because because I've run in the past, I've run pure Arch, and uh, you know, no issue, definitely nothing like that. I've been having with with this distro, um, and since this is coming from an, an Arch base, you know, it's like an ad. Uh, you know should run pretty good but I've been having lots and lots of performance issues so that was a big bummer for me because this is one of those distros where I really wanted to see it run well uh, and unfortunately it hasn't been all that great for me so we got a good website with a great installer and all kinds of software available the theming is great um, you know it, it would seem that they've got it all together here Unfortunately, performance is where this distro has been lacking, at least for me. Uh, I have been having trouble with software crashing, um, and it's been random, and it hasn't been any one particular piece of software. There's, you know, essentially everything has crashed at least a couple of times on me. Um, Part of the reason that I am not doing my usual webcam view like I do most of the time is because uh, I can't keep GUVC running. Cheese has been better, but it still freezes up quite a bit on me. Uh, and like I said, every program has it crashed at least a couple of times on me. And it seems like... Um, the, uh, the system does not like to run more than one program at a time. So, you know, if you got a couple things up and running, it, it's crashing all over the place on me, which is, you know, it, it kills my productivity because I'm not, you know, I'm multitasking the entire the entire day. So it's, it's really been a hit on my productivity. Uh, at first, I thought, well, maybe there was an installation issue. I reinstalled everything. No. Um, there there's something else 
and really for the amount of trouble that I've had I don't have the time to go and you know debug everything um, it's one thing if there's one little thing that I'm having an issue with you know I can go and I can go and and do a little background information or background uh, investigation try to figure out what the issue is file a bug report here or there but I mean performance wise everything has been a disaster for me anyway that about finishes things up here I uh, hope you've enjoyed the review as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.